Hello, welcome to the Jack Kent Cook Foundation's webinar overview of the 2021 Cook Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship and application process. I'm Alan Royal, Senior Program Manager of Outreach and Partnerships at the Cook Foundation. And I'm going to spend about 20 to 30 minutes sharing information about what the Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship is and how interested students can apply. I'll start by sharing some information about the Jack Kent Cook Foundation. The Cook Foundation is a nonprofit grants and scholarships provider dedicated to advancing the education of exceptionally promising students who have financial need. The foundation has three scholarship programs that currently support close to 1000 active scholars. And since the organization was founded, we've awarded more than $220 million in scholarship funding to nearly 2,800 students, in addition to more than $115 million in grants to other organizations that serve similar student populations. And we're based in Northern Virginia, outside of the DC metro area, but we provide scholarships to students from across the nation and the US territories. The undergraduate transfer scholarship is available to top community college students seeking to transfer to complete their bachelor's degrees at four year colleges or universities. And each scholarship recipient receives financial support for two to three years. They also receive educational advising and access to a supportive network of fellow scholars in the Cook Scholar community. And so again, in this webinar, I'm going to talk more about what the foundation looks for when selecting scholars, the expectations of the scholarship program itself, and then also the application process. So I'll begin by talking a little bit about who are Cook Scholars. Uh, the Cook community is made up of incredibly talented and dedicated people. Um, these Cook Scholars demonstrate a track record of high achievement in many areas, and our staff is considering a variety of factors and characteristics when selecting the cohort of students who will join the community each year. For example, obviously a strong academic record is important, taking challenging courses is important. The foundation is also looking at character and leadership, um, as well as engagement in the community. So if you just look by the numbers, you can see here on the screen, Cook Scholars often apply to and attend highly competitive colleges and universities. Around 70% of the students who become Cook Transfer Scholars are attending a highly competitive college or university. They're really successful in the classroom with an average GPA of about 3.84 across the scholar community, the Transfer Scholar community. And again, they're not only academically talented, but they're also committed to serving others and contributing positively to their communities. And about 93% are committed to civic or community service. And, and many times they find ways to sort of bridge their academic pursuits and a civic or social cause that they're very passionate about. So that's sort of one of the key components typically in many of the students that make it through the application process to become Cook Transfer Scholars. So it's important for applicants to be aware that the Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship is not just scholarship funding. Um, it's a comprehensive program with a variety of resources that scholars can take advantage of. And so these four program goals you see on the screen give a broad summary of what scholars can expect to experience once they receive the scholarship with the overarching goal of helping them fully invest in their academic journeys and really pushing them to maximize their potential. So for those students deciding if they want to apply, it's good to be aware of these different goals and what to expect as a Cook Scholar. Many scholars, again, are attending the nation's top four-year colleges and universities. 
this is not a requirement of the scholarship. We do not have particular colleges that students must attend or that we expect them to attend. But this really just goes to show um, the fact that scholars are striving to be in the best situations possible, the best situations for themselves, and are really seeking to find the best fit schools. And sometimes, many times, those higher, high, highly competitive colleges are great fits for a variety of reasons. Additionally, they're looking to gain skills, knowledge, and networks so they can remain confident and excel in college, connect with peers and mentors who are supporting their continued development, and also preparing for what comes after college, whether that's moving directly into a career or beginning graduate school to further their studies. And so again, thinking about the experience of the Cook Transfer Scholar, the scholarship program staff really helps scholars um, sort of understand that there's an entire experience. It's not just the scholarship funding, but they're really seeking to uh, expose them to a variety of supports and resources to help them become their best selves. Um, and so again, the financial support offers up to $40,000 per year for two to three years to complete the bachelor's degree at that four-year university. And this is again with the hope that most scholars will be able to graduate from college debt-free. But in addition to the scholarship funding, they're also receiving that one-on-one -on -one personalized academic advising that helps them prepare for that successful transition from their community college campus to the four-year campus and helps connect them to resources that they might need to successfully navigate the new campus environment and access the academic supports and enrichment opportunities that can benefit them and, and help them reach their goals. And advisors help facilitate connections to the larger Cook Scholar community as well as scholars get to know each other through organized events hosted by the foundation as well as you know, smaller hangout groups online um, and through webinars uh, with other scholars on their campuses and, and through their educational advisor really, who also facilitates many of the connections between scholars. So they'll have the opportunity to connect with and learn from people who are like-minded, people who have similar interests and people who may be you know, significantly different from different backgrounds with different interests um, to take advantage of the entire uh, network of, of Cook Scholars, as well as the alumni network. And the alumni network comes into, into play with mentorship and uh, career questions and things of that nature. So Cook Scholars really do have the opportunity to build strong bonds with one another and become huge supporters of each other on their educational journeys and in life. Um, and again, within the community, there are a variety of ways that they find um, to connect. And so once again, the educational advisor plays a pivotal role in the Cook Scholar experience. And so these are just a few of the responsibilities that the advisors take on in support of the scholars they work with. Uh, you can see again that they are in communication with the scholars consistently. Um, they were making regular campus visits prior to the impact of COVID-19, and hopefully that will be able to resume at some point. Um, but even so, they're working virtually to continue to support scholars in these same ways, uh, whether that's navigating campus resources, connecting them to other mentors, internship opportunities, fellowship opportunities, um, creating academic support plans, which could be in instances where they're preparing for next steps on a career um, goal, or it could be if they might be struggling or having issues that they need extra support with, uh, the advisor is there to help, help guide them in those situations. And once again, that future planning for career or the graduate school application process. And again, nearly 2,800 scholars compose the entire Cook Scholar and Alumni Network and about 1,000 currently active scholars, meaning scholars that are currently in college um, 
and these students live and are attending universities across the world. And again, we, we have hosted events to support facilitating these connections. One of those events is called Scholars Weekend. It is a three to four day weekend that typically happens in the month of August, where the new Cook Scholars come together and essentially are oriented to the program, learn more about what they're going to be doing as a part of the program, get the opportunity again to meet scholars and alumni, as well as Cook staff members, and so again, this year, due to the impact of COVID-19, we will be hosting the Scholars Weekend event virtually, um, but we hope that the same type of results can come in terms of students beginning to understand how to take full advantage of the undergraduate transfer scholarship, being able to make connections with each other, follow up with each other, find out which other Cook Scholars might be in close proximity to them, whether on their campuses with them, or maybe in the same cities or regions, and begin to really make those connections and, and become comfortable with understanding how to take advantage of the program. Another very unique opportunity for Cook Scholars is they have the opportunity to apply for graduate school funding as well. And so for students that are selected to become scholars, once they complete their bachelor's degree, they can also apply for a graduate school scholarship through the Cook Foundation um, that awards up to $75,000 to pursue a graduate degree in any field. Um, so that continuing support uh, beyond, again, just the current scholarship funding, even beyond the advising in terms of being able to take advantage of opportunities that are uh, really going to extend their potential and allow them to accomplish their goals. So I'm sure that you may be curious to learn a little bit more about how you can know if this scholarship is an opportunity that you can potentially take advantage of. The first thing that you will want to do is check your eligibility. The scholarship is highly competitive. We typically are able to select about 50 to 60 new scholars in each program each year. Um, and we receive anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 applications for the undergraduate transfer scholarship. So it is competitive and you wanna check and make sure that you are eligible to apply. So for the transfer scholarship, the undergraduate transfer scholarship, what that means is you have not previously been enrolled full-time at a four-year college or university. Um, some students may have done dual enrollment in high school, which does not count as full-time enrollment, or perhaps you maybe took a class or two um, or were, not, were unable to complete a semester for some reason. And so you may still be eligible and we encourage you to contact us if you have questions about that. But generally speaking, you have not um, enrolled at a four-year institution. You also have current status as a sophomore at your community college. So by January 1st, the end of the fall semester, you have sat status as a sophomore at your community college, or you may have already graduated community college and have your associate's degree. And so if you're a recent graduate within the last five years, meaning since the spring of 2016, um, you would still be eligible to apply for the undergraduate transfer scholarship. Additionally, we expect that you're planning to enroll in your four-year college in the fall of 2021. So you're not planning to enroll in the spring of 2021. You're not planning to take time off, but you wanna dive right into your bachelor's degree studies in the fall, uh, next fall. And then also the minimum GPA required is a 3.5 cumulative unweighted GPA. Um, and then finally, we um, ask you to demonstrate unmet financial need, which means that your family adjusted gross income does not exceed $95,000 per year. Um, so if you meet all of these requirements academically, financially, and with your enrollment status and plans in college, 
then you should be eligible to apply. Uh, and we encourage you to continue to consider the selection criteria, which I'll discuss here in a few slides um, as you consider completing an application. So in considering the application, I want to just give you a quick rundown of the application components. Um, and I'll mention this a little bit more later too, but the application is found exclusively on the Common App for Transfer website and portal. So many times students are familiar with Common App, um, but if you're not, Common App is uh, basically an opportunity for you to take advantage of applying to a variety of colleges and universities in one location. And so you would set up your account and have the opportunity to submit applications to a variety of schools that you might be interested in applying to. And the Cook Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship application also lives in Common App for Transfer. And on that application, you'll see these different requirements or components that you'll need to complete to have a, com a, a complete Cook Transfer Scholarship application. So again, we'll check that eligibility. We'll ask you for your transcripts, your academic transcripts, and to tell us about the courses that you've taken. We'll also ask you about extracurricular activities and other activities that you've been involved in outside of the classroom. The activity section is not a required section to have a complete common app for many other colleges and universities, um, but it is important that you do complete this for your Cook application. Again, as we'll discuss in a little bit regarding our selection criteria and the, uh, the characteristics that we're looking to evaluate in our applicants. Um, so you'll tell us about your activities, experiences, and achievements. You also uh, submit your personal statement that you would complete for your Common App um, towards other schools that you might be applying to, as well as some Cook Foundation specific questions that we'll ask you to respond to, more short answer questions discussing how you think you might be able to contribute to the Cook Scholar community. We'll ask you to self-report your income, your family income. And so for undergraduate transfer scholarship applicants, if you're under the age of 25, we will ask you to also submit your income in conjunction with your parents' income information. Even if you are uh, independent, uh, we'll want to know um, your parent income in addition to your income. If you're 25 or older, you will not have to submit parent income information when reporting, self-reporting your finances. Um, and then we'll ask you information about your family. So if you've had other family members that may have been Cook Scholars in the past, what your household dynamic is currently like. Um, and then we'll ask you a, a few questions about sharing information and other waivers that we wanna be sure and get your permission to be able to contact you more in the future with other opportunities and things of that nature. Okay, let's discuss the selection criteria. So you know that you're eligible. This sounds like a good opportunity for you, something that you want to take a chance applying for. How do you know how to tailor that application? What kinds of things are we at the Cook Foundation looking to evaluate in our applicants? Well, once again, first and foremost, the academic achievement is the most heavily weighted criteria and aspect that we are evaluating. So we want to know how well you're doing in school, what courses you're taking, um, the, the rigor of your curriculum that you have decided to embrace, um, and really how passionate you are about your learning and about your particular of subjects that you're interested in pursuing, your majors that you're interested in pursuing. We're also gonna be looking for persistence, evidence of persistence. What we mean by persistence is your work ethic, uh, your determination, and your ability to uh, remain resilient, even in the face of challenges. Um, and challenges can look very different from student to student. How a challenge may be perceived or defined can look very different from student to student. Um, so we're not measuring uh, hardship per se, 
but we definitely want to know about the obstacles that you have encountered in life and in school um, to give us a sense of how you respond when faced with the challenge. We'll also look to evaluate your leadership ability. And what we mean by this is your ability to positively influence others, um, your ability to take initiative and to, to pursue the things that you're passionate about, the causes and the missions that you're passionate about. So that could also look a variety of ways. It could be involvement in a club on campus. It could be involvement in a social justice organization in your community. It could be um, involvement at your church or even you know, certain responsibilities at home, whether that's taking care of younger siblings or grandparents. Um, really leadership can look different from person to person in so many ways. So we wanna hear about your particular journey with leadership and how you enact that in your life. And then finally, uh, we want to hear about how you seek to serve others. So how are you demonstrating compassion and contributing to a community over a sustained period of time, giving of yourself, giving of your time and your energy to others? Um, and so all four of these criteria are very important to us as we seek to select the next cohort of Cook Transfer Scholars. Uh, again, with academic achievement sort of being that most heavily weighted and sort of the gateway into making sure that this um, scholarship program is going to be a good fit for you but the other components being very important for us to understand about you as a person as well and again want to to mention once more that the application is actually found on the common app for transfer it could be that you are not planning to use Common App for transfer um, for your college applications, your transfer college applications, and that's totally fine. Just please be aware that you will have to still create a, a Common App for transfer account to apply for the Cook Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship, even in the event that you're not using it to apply to any colleges that you may be interested in attending. Um, so you can look for it there and you can find a link to that directly on our website starting August 1st when the application opens. All right, getting close to wrapping up, but wanted to share a few links uh, if you have follow-up questions specifically related to the application itself and about Common App for Transfer. You can visit the Common App Help Center at the URL listed there on the screen, and you can also email that email address if you are having Maybe technical issues navigating um, Common App or understanding aspects of Common App. Um, and if you have questions about the undergraduate transfer scholarship, the Cook Foundation eligibility cri selection criteria, criteria, or anything related specifically to the scholarship itself, you can visit the Jack Kent Cook Foundation website, jkcf.org backslash transfer. And we have a lot of resources available on our site that explain about the program. There's a frequently asked questions section where a lot of the questions about, for example, obtaining recommendations um, and other aspects of the application are explained. And if you can't find your answer to your question there, you can absolutely email us at scholarships at jkcf.org, scholarships with an S and we typically are able to respond to most inquiries via email um, in a couple of business days. So we encourage you to reach out to us as well as Common App if you have questions as you're working on the application. And, and definitely, again, take a look at the Jack Kent Cook Foundation website as many of the resources that you might need can be found there. Um, and then finally want to include you in understanding the timeline and so the application is typically open a little bit shorter, um, but this year we're opening it until January 6th of 2021. Um, again, with so many things changing in response to COVID-19, we want to be sure that um, applicants have the opportunity to uh, take full advantage to submit their best application possible. So it will open on August 1st and close on January 6th. Um, and then we will move through the application process relatively quickly. We may not be able to announce semifinalists in January, but I believe in February at the latest, 
we'll be looking to announce our semifinalist group. And the semifinalist group is typically anywhere from one third to one quarter of the applicant pool. Um, and these are the students who have made it through the first round of review. Every single application is read in its entirety by at least two people um, before we make that first round of cuts. And um, we will move through that process, announce semifinalists, and then most likely reach out to those semifinalists to verify income information and possibly uh, request additional materials before we move into the second round of the read to make our final decisions on who the recipients will be. And we will aim to announce recipients of the scholarship in April of 2021. Um, and so again, we appreciate you taking time to um, consider the application. Uh, if you happen to be on social media, we encourage you to follow the Jack and Cook Foundation social media sites on Twitter and Instagram, where you can find a lot of information, not only about the application and about the scholarship program, but you can understand other things that are going on with the Cook Foundation and also have the opportunity to see what Cook scholars are doing, particularly on the Instagram account. We post a lot about what scholars are doing in different campuses across the nation. And um, it gives you an opportunity to kind of see into their world, learn about their experiences and hear from them about their experiences, not just even in the program, but in you know the amazing work that they're doing um, in all the fields and areas that they're studying and, and making great strides in. So uh, again, thank you so much for taking time to view the webinar and we wish you the best in your future educational endeavors and hope that everyone stays safe and healthy during this time. Thank you.